everyone and welcome back to the channel um i know i'm wearing a turtleneck right now I, w I want to address this real quick so basically i went to the beach on saturday right and i didn't reapply my sunscreen on my shoulders so now i'm sunburnt um i don't know what i'm gonna do about it because um I'm taking my license picture. Oh, my straws and like the shot. I am so sorry. I'm taking my license picture literally the day after I filmed this video, right? Um, so this is the life I've, I'm leading. I feel like the lighting looks bad, but that could just be me. <sighs> Anyways. Um, if you are new here to the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, whatever. Also, if you don't see me, if you see me moving my hands a lot or not moving them at all, it's because my shoulders really hurt. So I want to move them just to like get them in the ease and the swing of things. But I also don't want to move them because they hurt. So yeah, I also have my vaccine like the day after I filmed this video. Um, this video won't be up for like two weeks, I believe. When you're seeing this, I filmed this like two weeks ago because uh, I wanted to film a video and this was technically the only video I had ready to film. So yeah. Um, if you are new here, please consider subscribing if you have not done so already. Um, if you are not new here, I know that most of you are not subscribed. I do not understand why you're not. So please do subscribe. Um, I would love to have you here. And so would all my other subscribers. So yeah. Um, so back in February, I made this like little series, I guess, where I talked about black inventors. If you have not seen it, I'll leave an I card um to that above uh i talked about jack johnson um and how he invented the wrench and i talked about frederick jones and how he invented refrigerated long-haul trucks among other things there was supposed to be a third episode um but i accidentally deleted like half of that video so i'm going to try and refilm that soon or try to edit that back soon so that you guys have that video right so yeah um so my plan with that is to continue it for the rest of time um if i continue deciding i want to have a youtube channel because history is very important um and at least in america we are not taught proper history i know this please don't argue this with me i have written multiple papers about how history just isn't what it is um in the american education system we are taught a watered down whitewashed history and if not that that history is just not talked about and it's erased from history books so I, having the platform that I have, decided to talk about minority history. So in, I started it in February with talking about Black people who created history, since it was Black History Month. And since it is June when you are watching this, I decided I wanted to talk about two LGBTQ plus inventors or people who are believed to be lgbtq plus because believe it or not a lot of historical figures there is some evidence to point to lgbt or there's there's something a little fruity about them all right so for this month i will be talking about two inventors <sighs> who are believed to be LGBTQ+. Right, and after that, they may, they may be other types of minorities, such as um, 
<laughs> the two people we are going to be talking about. So, yeah. And then we'll just continue on from there. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, for today's video, we are going to be talking about Florence Nightingale. Uh, the woman with the lamp. Oh, the lady with the lamp. Not the woman with the lamp. The lady with the lamp. Um, and she is basically regarded as this, well, she was, she was a cleanly person. I believe she is regarded as like the mother of, um, modern science or, yeah, modern, not modern science, but like modern nursing, right? So we are going to get into her. We are going to be talking about how she is possibly a lesbian um and yeah so i hope you guys enjoy it <laughs> um if you see me looking over here a lot it's because i have my notes over here so yeah let's get this show on the road so florence nighting okay hold on i need a drink my nice coffee i feel like this is like i know it's pretty light but i feel like this is like I feel like I'm showing my true sexuality here. <laughs> Today we're drinking iced coffee. Um, I bought this like pack of ground coffee from Starbucks. Uh, yeah. Starbucks ground coffee that tastes like caramel. And uh, I also bought this Italian sweet cream creamer. Mix that in with some almond milk and boom. It's caramel iced coffee. Uh, I I feel like this is pretty much... I feel like I'm screaming LGBT. <sighs> okay. Now let's get this shit on the road. So Florence Nightingale was born May 12th in 1820. She was born in Florence, Italy, Italy, hence her name, to William Shore Nightingale and Frances Nightingale. She was the younger of two siblings, and her family was very affluent and very social climbing. <laughs> um, Florence's mother was born to a family of merchants and loved to talk to people in high social standings. And... Um, yeah. Florence herself was actually very socially awkward and she followed her mother's guidance. Um, when Florence was five, her father, a wealthy landowner who inherited, um, okay. Florence's father inherited two estates when she was five. There you go. That's the sentence. These estates were Leah Hurst, Derby Derbyshire, and Hampshire. I am so sorry if I mispronounced that. I am not English. Um, Embley Park. Florence was raised in both estates, and her father taught her a classic education where she learned multiple languages, such as German, French, and Italian. And she was able to write in German, French, Italian, Greek, and Latin. Her father taught her history, literature, philosophy, and she was very good in math. Um, she preferred to have civil discourse, which I mean in the 1800s was not very ladylike. Women speak? No. Um... And since she was a child, philanthropy was her calling. She believed it was her calling from God to be a nurse and to help people. Um, however, because she was a woman living in the Victorian age, um, her parents did not want her to study nursing. They would just rather her follow the traditional think of get married have a baby live by man 
Um, so now we're going to get into a little bit on why historians think she might be a little fruity. Um, so basically she would write in her diary entries and, um, she would write in her diary and at age 17 she was promised to Richard Monckton Milnes. Um, and in her diary she had stated that while he stimulated her intellectually and romantically, her her moral active nature requires satisfaction that would not fit in this life. And I found that from <clears throat> history.com. <laughs> so obviously you can interpret that how you want. Some people interpret it as her being gay because like, you know, Um, and another one of my sources linked in a Google Doc down below. Speaking of down below, there are various petitions to sign and various GoFundMes to fund down below. So please do that if you have not done so already, because yes. Anyways, in one of my sources down below, it basically states that she may not have been attracted to men, but be again, because of her religious beliefs, she never really explored anything because apparently homosexuality is seen as a sin for some reason. I'll never understand that. But, um, however, against her parents' wishes, Florence enrolled at Lutheran Hospital of Pastor Flidner, I'll never know, in Kaiserwerth, Germany to study nursing in 1844. And she moved back to London and began work at Middlesex Align, began the work, began work at the Middlesex Aligning Governesses. I will never understand English. Um, after a year working there, she was promoted to superintendent where she saw how unsanitary the hospital conditions were. And because of this, she tried to improve the sanitation of the hospital, which proved to be challenging to the point that her health was at risk. I don't know why these hospitals weren't getting cleaned. Like, it's the 1800s. I can't judge too much. However, this was very good, as you can possibly assume, because there was less, less, less of a death rate in this hospital because people started cleaning. Truly an innovator. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't, I still don't understand why these people weren't cleaning their damn hospitals, but it's okay. I shall live. I will move on with this. <sighs> then the Crimean War broke out. Do I understand anything about the Crimean War? Absolutely not. I tried to understand this damn war, but I couldn't. What I could gather from looking into the Crimean War was that basically the Russian Empire wanted um, some of Jerusalem and then the Turkish Ottoman Empire did not like that. So um, they basically said to Russia, we're in like a war now, homie. And because Britain and France are allies of Turkey, they joined the war. Um, if that is completely 100% incorrect, please correct me down below. I don't understand wars. Wars are stupid. I'll never understand the damn war, honestly and truly. Never. Never. That's, that's, that's my thing. That's my issue. Uh, that's my toxic trait. Never understanding war. Maybe it's because I'm a woman. I'll never understand. <laughs> Anyways, anywho, so because of this, there were obviously more people in hospitals. Um, British soldiers were sent out to the Black Sea, and by 1854, 18,000 soldiers were in military hospitals. And in late 1854, Florence was called upon to help military hospitals tend to their wounded. Um, 
and as requested she rallied 34 other nurses um to help and the reason that she was um called for and asked to bring 34 other nurses was because multiple people were upset at how understaffed and unhygienic and inhumane these hospitals were. War officials were hesitant at first because of uh, past complications with hiring nurses and stuff like that, but because there was so much public outcry and so many casualties, they decided to go for it. Uh, totally not to be that kind of person, but this is why protesting works because if there is enough public outcry the government has to do something about it so please remember that okay when these nurses arrived to this hospital they quickly saw how inhumane these conditions were the hospital laid in a cesspool of nasty water and it was infecting the water in the hospital itself um wounded soldiers were not tended for at all they just laid in stretchers in the hallway um in their own bodily juices if you catch my they were sitting in their own shit i tried to be nice but Yes. Um, patients were constantly dying of illnesses such as typhoid, cholera, and had rodents walking all over them. Um, and Florence, being the innovator that she was in the 1800s, she made it her mission to clean this hospital. Right? So she asked those who could clean to clean she got them to clean she would tend for the patients and this is where she gets her nickname lady with a lamp um because in the night she literally wouldn't sleep in the night in the evening she would go up to her patients and with you know the the classic 1800s little lamp and go up to them and make sure that they were okay and help them out as much as she could. And that is why she is labeled as the lady of the lamp, the lady with the lamp. Um, but she also has the nickname, the angel of Crimea. Um, and because she cared for people and did the basic work to help people, um, England improved a lot because of her. Um, because of her sanitary procedures, hospital, um, the death rate at hospitals was reduced by two thirds. She made hospitals more sanitary. She even made a kitchen um, that even appealed to patients with special dietary needs. She made a laundry room so that patients could have clean clothing, clean linen. Um, she made a classroom and a library so that patients could have something to do in their day and be intellectually stimulated. And this is kind of an invention. No, not really. We're not. Okay. Sorry. That's a little later. Um, she wrote a report based on her observations called Notes on Matters Affecting the Health, Efficiency, and Hospital Administration of the British Army, which led to the establishment of the Royal Commission for the Health of the Army in 1857. She even created this with the support of Queen Victoria herself. When Florence came back from the war in 1856, she was given a hero's welcome. The Queen even gifted her 25000 no, $250,000. Um, and gave her an engraved brooch with Nightingale's Jewel. I mean, it's called Nightingale's Jewel now. Um, and 
even though we've talked about many great things that she did, you know, bringing sanitation to hospitals, um, lowering death rates, um, even creating the Royal Commission for the health and something of the army, right? Even through all of this, she did even more <laughs> amazing things. Um, her new team, which consisted of William Farr and John Sutherland, found that 16,000 out of the 18,000 deaths from the war were not due to battle, but due to preventable diseases if people weren't so damn disgusting and actually clean things. With this, Florence made a graph displaying how the sanitary committee's work helped to decrease mortality rates. This is her invention, which is the Nightingale's Rose Diagram. Um, because why stop at improving people's lives when you can just create a whole diagram? And show people the importance of cleaning. <laughs> Um, and because of her graph, more people understood understood the importance of hygiene. So proud of that. Um, and she was the first ever woman to enter the Royal Statistical Association. She was even named an honorary member of the American Statistical Association. Um, and before she had returned to her childhood f home, she stayed in Scutari, um, it was here that she was contracted, it was here that she contracted the Crimean fever. Um, she never fully recovered and was homebound by 1858. <sighs> In 1860, with the money that she had received, she funded St. Thomas's Hospital, which included Nightingale's Training School for Nurses, um, due to her efforts, more young women were inspired to become nurses and instead of being ashamed for it, like how Florence was when she told her parents she wanted to be a nurse, young women were now starting to be encouraged to go out and pursue nursing and pursue getting an education. And I love that. I love that. Being educated is very important and being a nurse is a very important job um it has been for when was nursing created i'll never know but it's been since then so i'm glad that she was able to uh just take away the stigma of women receiving an education even if it was just for nursing, I'm glad she took away that stigma because women can do whatever they want. Yeah, I'm so glad. Um, she was basically a worldwide sensation. Multiple forms of media were dedicated to her. Pol uh, politicians would go to her bedside and she was a consultant for how to treat wounded soldiers when the Civil War broke out over here in America. Um, she was a consultant of public health affairs for the military and civilians in India. In 1859, she wrote Notes on Hospitals, which focuses on how to run civilian hospitals. She was also the first woman to receive the Order of Merit in 1907. In 1908, she was given the Medal of Honor by King Edward. And two years later in, hold on. Two years later in 1910, she received a congratulatory message by King George on her birthday. Sadly, Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamp, the angel of Crimea, uh, passed away August 13th, 1910. Her funeral was attended by only her family as per her request. She was laid to rest in Hampshire, England. Um, there is a museum dedicated to her um, and her work where the original Nightingale Training School for Nurses was. 
She is globally revered to this day and was the pioneer for modern nursing. And she was important in setting up the creation of nurses and midwives. And every year on May 12th, her birthday is celebrated um, along with celebrating nurses and nursing as a whole, right? And, you know, when I read about her, again, she is an incredible person, you know, um, I, I'm so glad she continued her dream of being a nurse and studying nursing and going through with it even when her family told her not to because excuse me because of just society you know i feel like she brings along many important messages many oh okay rude many important things that we should talk about um which is don't let society deter you from what you want to do who you want to become stuff like that and on top of that to be hygienic please if you can please please hygiene please hygiene important um and you know what i think i think i may be a florence florence nightingale stan because i love this um i love seeing this um every single time when i do research for any of these videos i am so excited to see what these people have done i am so excited to see just how many minorities have accomplished so many things because again we are rarely talked about in anything or anywhere so it's incredulous to see people like myself well she was possibly lgbt i am lgbt and i'm a woman um to see that in someone and to see how that type of person could do something so incredible like that so yeah i normally don't do this but i'm gonna do this for this one because i'm very excited for the next episode um the next episode we are going to be talking about george washington carver so stay tuned for that that one's gonna come out i believe the week after next if i follow my schedule so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video remember to like comment share and subscribe um and i'll see you guys next time Lisa,